Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your lunch. Before we talk about the future global economic position, I would just like to talk about the business cycle. It's sometimes known as boom and bust. Gordon Brown once said, no more boom and bust. Was he right? He was completely wrong with that statement, but I don't think he believed what he said. Remember, politicians have a short shelf life. They know there is a fickle public who only want to hear good news. Therefore, that's what they feed them. But the reality is, it's false promises. Good answer. The reality is, boom and bust cannot be eliminated under the debt-based monetary fractional reserve banking system. I will try and simplify it for you. Does anyone know what the fractional reserve ratio was before the dollar was taken off the gold standard? Can you please explain the term fractional reserve ratio? The fractional reserve ratio is a ratio of money held in reserve, supporting money lent out. The fractional reserve ratio was 1 to 9. That's correct. With that sort of reserve ratio, boom and bust were not too extreme. So what is different today? I guess the boom and bust are much greater today. That's correct, but do you know why? Prior to 1971 gold had to be held in reserve, therefore it helped maintain a sensible fractional reserve ratio. However once the dollar was taken off the gold standard, the strict discipline was not required and therefore the reserve ratio went out of kilter. That's right. Why did the banks abandon the strict discipline regarding the reserve ratios? Very good question. Can anyone answer that? It was simply down to greed. The dollar became a fiat currency, in other words backed by nothing. That's right. Okay, under the debt-based monetary fractional reserve banking system, how can you stimulate demand for goods and services? You could get people to borrow more. That's right. It required clever marketing and opportunities for the public to purchase goods at cheap prices. How did we manage to keep goods so cheap, such as televisions, computers and iPads? The global economic system relied on the Asian countries producing cheap goods by significantly suppressing the workers' wages. This enabled the West to have a relatively wealthy lifestyle. Correct. To enable the consumption cycle, there needed to be a catalyst for growth. Does anyone know what that was? The introduction of credit cards. Yes, that's right. Anything else? The introduction of derivatives, a fancy new financial instrument that also encouraged consumption. Steve and I were only talking about that the other week. Good. Any other methods that were used to stimulate demand for goods and services to enable growth? There was of course, subprime lending. That's right. So what effectively happened? We had the illusion of wealth, but in reality, we were no better off. George, you have hit the nail on the head. The truth is, we are no better off as a result of the banks loaning too much money into existence. In fact, as I will demonstrate, we will be much worse off. The banking elite have been very clever, as they loaned money into existence, it came with a price, and that was interest payments on your loans, excessive interest payments in some cases, such as credit card charges. On the television you see adverts for payday loans, the annual percentage rate is 4214%, when people get that desperate, it is virtually impossible to pay back your debts. I was talking to Tracy the other day, she did not seem to mind using payday loans, I told her she was in denial. Many people today see debt as a natural state, we have been conditioned to that, however, debt creeps up on you, and the compound interest is crippling. That's correct, however the banks are happy to cream off the profits. Surely, if there is too much debt, people will simply default. Exactly, and that's what happened in 2008. The insurance companies and banks were in danger of going bankrupt. That's when they introduced TARP, Troubled Asset Relief Program. The taxpayers simply bailed out the banks, as they were considered too big to fail. At that time there was a fractional reserve ratio of about 1 to 35, following the irresponsible lending. It seems that the taxpayers were too small to save. Correct, and the massive redistribution of wealth continued to the banking elite as they received their bonuses even though their banks were failing. Why on earth did we bail out the banks? It was to stop the entire global economic collapse. 
Jennifer, you are being too kind, the truth is, there is too much of a cozy relationship between the banking elite and the politicians, as I mentioned before, our only hope is Ron Paul in the US, he is not backed by the multinational corporations, he can stand as an open and honest politician for the president of the US. Okay, we have established that there is too much debt in the system, far too much to pay back, so what is the solution? I am going to be blunt. There is no solution that does not involve a depression. It's just a case of how we manage it. Tony, I admire you for your realistic approach, because that is the way it is. Have a look at the caption on the screen, because it I believe it is the best way describing our position today. The stimulus money is just delaying the inevitable. The patient will die. It's just that it is going to be a long and more painful death. Could I have a show of hands if you agree that a depression is inevitable? Steve, I noticed that your hand did not go up. Don't you think that we will enter a depression? It's in the interest of the government to prevent a depression. I am sure that they will think of something. Steve, I am afraid that you suffer from normalcy bias. The mathematics just do not add up. Even governments cannot sort the problem out. George is right. The tipping point has been passed. I suspect that the politicians now know the game is up and will drip feed worse news. I have no doubt they know what is truly going on, but up until now, they have hit the bad news. Okay Steve, what do you think the governments should do? Keep stimulating the economy. People will continue to spend and we shall get growth. That's what the US are doing. They have already raised the debt ceiling last August. President Obama said had the debt ceiling not been raised, the US would have entered a depression, guess what, he was right, the only problem is, it has delayed an even worse depression further down the road, trust me Steve, it has to be tackled at some time. Here in the UK, all they are doing is applying austerity measures, surely that is not working. Steve, I fear that it is the best of the two evils. Just look at Italy and Greece, they have had problems with their 10 year bond yields, the yields have exceeded 7%. A figure that is unsustainable for a country to remain solvent, it is very much like a person relying on payday loans to get by. In conclusion, if the market forces were not to be interfered with, we would enter a deflationary spiral, due to falling demand for goods and services. This would also affect commodity prices including gold and silver. However, governments tend to interfer by propping up the system with quantitative easing therefore debasing the money supply, which eventually creates hyperinflation. So you see, there is no way out of this problem, it has to be faced. I fear that the governments will interfere and continue with quantitative easing, however in the short term price inflation will slow down, as a result of reduced demand for goods and services. During this period I shall be buying physical gold and silver, because once quantitative easing accelerates, Gold and silver will rise relative to the dollar. Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity in thanking Jennifer for her time.